Yo, yo, yes sir, man, we live and we back, welcome, welcome back to the Golden Goose DFS show, I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose Man, y'all know why I'm here, I'm here to bring you another edition of my starting five on DraftKings and Fan Duel, alright, but before we get into it, y'all already know, got the lineup review, man, going on my best lineup from yesterday's slate, alright, so we're going to get into this breakdown for y'all. Y'all be sure to, man, if you just now tuning in, it's your first time coming across this channel, man, go on and hit that subscribe button. You won't be sorry, I guarantee it. And you already know, if you're in the sound of my voice, man, definitely, definitely hit that like button for your boy, man. Thank y'all so much for the likes, for all those who are liking. Shout out to the one hater with the thumbs down yesterday. I appreciate you. Keep on coming back, man. All right, let's get into this breakdown. Hey, man, last night was a very solid night, man. We almost made history. I had a dual sweat going, man. We almost had two takedowns, one on DraftKings and one on FanDuel. I don't know if that's ever been done, but it's, it's not, not, not on my end. It definitely would have been history over here, man. Let's get into this breakdown. Got my best lineup pulled up. This is a $12 single entry, man. We came in 21st place, man. Uh, you see it right here. Put up 352, man, with the starting five I posted yesterday on Twitter, man. So if you caught this thing, you should have been in line for a nice cash. But let's get into the breakdown, man. At the top, everybody's favorite chalk yesterday, Anthony Simons. I just told you, I told y'all, man, you had to play him. I told you it was going to be good chalk. Just play him no matter what the ownership was, man. And he came in at a whopping 65% over here in his 12 dollars single entry. But the monster game from him, man, 61 DK points. Man, you had to have him yesterday. I feel sorry for the 35% of the people in this contest who didn't have him. I felt like he was a can't-miss lock play yesterday. I told y'all yesterday. Yesterday morning on the video, I had 100% Anthony Simons yesterday, 100%. Uh, great game from him, man. Definitely helped you out if you had him in your lineups. Come in and shoot and go. I went Bradley Bill, man. I, I, I was heavy on this Charlotte game. I like Gaffer. I like Bill. I, you saw me mention him in yesterday's video. Bill came in at 54% on. Very solid, man. 57 DK points from Bradley Bill right here. He had a nice night, but there was better pay-up options, so. If you could, if you could uh, squeeze a little more salary and got up to like Embiid or Trey Young, man, you would have had a better night. But uh, Bill right here, like I said, fifty-four percent on fifty-seven DK point, very solid for him. Small forward, man, the guy who sunk my battleship. If you caught the starting five yesterday, you know it was Simons, Bradley Bill, Marcus Morris Senior, Wendell Carter Jr., and Daniel Gafford. All right. Marcus Morris Sr. This 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 Clippers blow I hurt man hurt. If I get if I get Powell right here instead of Marcus Morris Sr. It's a takedown. We win the whole thing. But hey, you you you, you go with your plays, man. I thought Marcus Morris Sr. was a solid player. This six K came in at fifty three percent on right here. They just got handled by the Timberwolves, man. Twelve points, two rebounds. Right at 18 DK points, a horrible night outing for Marcus Morris Senior. Man, he sunk, he sunk the battleship. Man, if he if he if he just drop us about 35, 40, I think we take down this contest right here. But hey, man, you gonna win some, you gonna lose some. Coming in at my power four, I went Wendell Carter Jr. Got him at seven percent on man. He was solid, nice double double from him right here in this spot. Forty two DK points. I was hoping for OT. I was like, man, please give me back to back OT. I could have used another fifty burger from Carter Jr. But forty two was solid, very serviceable. Need expected a little more out of him, but we'll take it right here. At center, Daniel Gafford, man, thirty eight percent on. I, I love playing centers against Charlotte, man. It's the ultimate pace-up spot, the ultimate matchup smash spot, centers against Charlotte. I love playing him. I got Daniel Gaffer right here. Uh, he gave us right at 39 DK points. Very solid. I thought he was going to have a monster, man. The kid, um, he had like 20 in the first. I, I thought we was on the way to like a 50-60 burger from him, man. He had 20 fantasy points in the first quarter. Kind of slowed down for it, but still gave us a solid performance right here at the 6K. At my guard spot, I went Cork Mars. 
uh, once I saw he was starting, man, I just thought it was a great way to get a uh, different value piece, especially get away from some of that Daniel Tice that everybody was on. I was not really feeling Tice yesterday, and for him to be 50% on, I knew I didn't want to go there. So, Cork Moss, once I saw he was starting, he gave me a great pivot to that Tice chalk. So, got him at 23% on. He just went bananas, man. It was a couple of guys who had some career performances last night. Simons, Cork Moss, and Kuzma. Career performances last night, man. They went nuts, man. But I'm glad to have some of Cork Mars right here at 23% on. He gave us 52 DK points, man, at 3,300, man. One of the best point per dollar plays on the slate yesterday. Come in at power forward. The play that really set me apart right here from the field and pushed me to the top. Miles Bridges right here, 7400. Got him at 1% on. You got to love that, man. 58 burger. Big double double for Miles Bridges. Yesterday, man. Everybody was heavy on the Wizards guys, the Bill, the Gaffers. People was on Kuzma, not that much. I thought he was overpriced on DK. I didn't get that's why I didn't get any Kuzma, but y'all know how I do, man. If I'm taking two or three pieces from a game, especially a game like that that's predicted to be the highest scoring game on the slate and a close game at that, I think the Wizards was favored by two or something like that. And it was a closer game. Nobody was going to the Charlotte Hornets. So I played a I played a bunch of lineups. I had Bill and Gaffer in, in most of all my lineups. And I ran them back with Bridges in spots. I ran them back with Hayward in spots. I ran them back with Rozier in spots. Just trying to get to those uh Charlotte Hornet guys. I, I, I feel like that's a mistake. When you got a game, when you got a game that's projected that high and projected to be close, for all the ownership mainly to be on one side of that game, I feel it was wrong. So I definitely I got definitely got pieces of the Charlotte Hornets guys. And Miles Bridges worked out for us right here. Like I said, at one percent on definitely pushes to the top of the leaderboard. And then Nas Reed right here, fifty five percent. Another play that was solid chalk, uh, good chalk in my opinion, especially with no car Anthony Towns. 4,800, he got off to a fast start as well. But like I said, the Minnesota blowout really hurt us right here. If this game is closer, man, and these guys perform, we easily take this down. Let's look at the winning lineup and uh, see what they did compared to what we did. Cricket, 1295, all right? This is his bill. Congratulations, first of all, bringing home this single entry right here. He put up 400, all right? He had Bill like I was on. We had Cork Mars together. Kuzma right there, six percent. Definitely set him apart. That's sixty six right there. Kuzma with the career night. I thought he was overpriced on DK, like I said, but hey, he he, he had it going last night. Uh, oh, Brandon Clark, thirty eight hundred, low on play right there. I just didn't trust his minutes. I didn't know. I looked at Clark, but I I, I didn't really want to run him out. KJ Martin, nice. Uh, another guy. I really stayed away from a lot of those Houston guys. I, cause it was so many guys, so many plays that were similar. I felt like it could have been anybody over there on that Houston side. So I didn't want to get to nobody. Like I didn't, I didn't know. I couldn't narrow it down. You had Green, Gordon, KJ Martin, Daniel Tice, Garrison Matthews. People was on uh, uh, Tate. I, I just felt like it was so many pieces over there that could have did it. And I couldn't narrow down to who it could be, so I just stayed away from it altogether. But KJ Martin was solid at six uh, percent on right at twenty five DK points, four to five hundred Simons as well, Nas Reed as well, and he got the Trey Young. Trey Young would definitely did it, man. Trey Young, eighty five DK points, man, the player tonight, monster spot from. Him. Like I said, shout out right here to uh, Cricket twelve ninety five, nice lineup right here, man, for the four hundred. All right, let's go take a look at FanDuel. See the other almost takedown. FanDuel. This was the 222, I think, uh, yeah, 2.5K the first, man. We came in 56th place over here, put up a 424. Let's get into the breakdown. Yeah, I had that Trey Young over here. I had that Trey Young play over here on FanDuel. That definitely what did it. But at the top, point guard Anthony Simons, 52% on, man. You just had to play him yesterday. I don't know what the other half of the field was thinking, but. Maybe they was hoping he didn't start. I, I can't say that because maybe they was hoping he didn't start and it was Dennis Smith Jr. I, I could see people playing Dennis Smith Jr. yesterday as well, too. But uh, Anthony Simon, just solid, man. 55 fan duel points. 
Then I brought it back with my boy Trey Young, man, playing off that Portland game over here. Uh, 56 points, man, uh, real life points. 78 fan duel points at 24% on. He definitely pushed us up the leaderboard here in this spot. My shooting guard spot, I, run, I went with Luca out here, man. I felt like he was a uh, great value over here on fan duel at uh, 10K. And if you caught the updated star five I put on Twitter, you, you would have saw that Luca was in it. At 11% on, I definitely take that. Uh, 62 fantasy point. I felt like, like I said, I felt like he was the perfect pivot. People were paying off for Harden, uh, Jokic. He, he was coming in at 10K on fan, dude, man. The cheapest you'll ever probably see Luca. So I wanted to take advantage of the savings right there. And he, it worked out for me in that spot. At my shooting guard, went Bradley Beal once again. I was just all over those Wizards guys, man. 62% on though over here for Bradley Bill, but 54 fan duel points, very solid. My boy Norman Powell got him over here. He was cheap over here on fan duel. That's why I rolled with him. I, I, I wasn't really comfortable with that 6,500 on DK, but I love this 6K over here on fan duel. Got him in this lineup at 41% on. He gave us 49 fan duel points. Coming at small four, Garrison Matthews, man. This was just a, this was the salary I had left. I saw him starting. I said, "Fuck it, just give me." Oh, pardon my cousin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, "Just give me Garrison Matthews, man." Uh, and it worked out. And one percent on man, he gave us 32 fan to a point. Very solid in this lineup right here. At my power four, try to get cute with Aaron Gordon, man. Uh, at five percent on coming back in the rotation, coming off of uh, whatever he was on COVID injury. At this point, I don't even know. People just be missing. I don't even know if it's injury, COVID. I just know they out. But Aaron Gordon, five percent on man, gave us twenty nine uh, fan to a point. Very very serviceable yesterday, right here in this spot. And my other power forward, when the Carter Junior stayed on him. He got him at 23% on. He gave us 39 fan duel points. And then Nas Reed at the bottom, man. 30% on, 25 fan duel points. I already talked about how to blow out her that one. Now let's go look at the winning lineup and see what they did compared to what I did. AKAs? Okay. Uh, 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 Ackles, I don't know how you want to say that. But AKAs right here with the takedown, 449. We had Trey Young. We look very similar up top. Exact four plays. Young, Simmons, Bill, Luca. The exact same plays at the top. That is where he got well, got Powell as well. He went Kuzma. That was the play I needed. Kuzma, 6,800. Much better play over here on FanDuel than he was on uh, DK at 8K, in my opinion. I don't care that he went off. He was overpriced on DraftKings, but could have got to him over here on, on FanDuel, definitely. Uh, what else? Da he, he went Daniel Tice in this lineup. Brandon Clark and Nurkic, man. Oh, she snuck Nurkic in there. Low ownership. That had to be a, a late swap right there to Nurkic because nobody was on him. Uh, once it 5900 yeah, buddy. That was a nice price on him. Y'all know I love Nurkic, but I, I was just scared of his minutes, and he was a late ad, so I stayed away from him. But nice play right there way to get the nurkage though solid lineup from aka's man like i said 449 congratulations to him but enough of that man let's get on to today's five game let's see what we can cook up for y'all today we, we running hot over here we're on a little heater we're gonna try to take advantage of it man we got a tough five game slate today man it's tough especially on dk that pricing is tough but at the point guard at the top give me De'Aaron fox man 7100 y'all know i like to pick on this lakers team they can't stop a nosebleed this game should be closed the lakers can't cover that i don't see they can't blow anybody out so it should be a competitive high scoring game right here probably the best uh fantasy environment on today's slate and De'Aaron fox i think is coming in at a discount, 7100 man. I think I take these savings right here on De'Aaron Fox, man. He he's been ramp he's been ramping up his his play lately. Um, I like getting to him in this spot at 7100. I think this is a nice solid price for him. Coming in at the shooting guard, I want to look at Fred Van Vliet, man. 9K going against these San Antonio Spurs. Pace up spot for him. Fred Van Vliet has been playing lights out, man. He's been solid over the last two. And if you go back to before his injury and add them three in there, man, he's averaging probably like 53 uh, DraftKings points over his last four or five games, man. He's just playing lights out. 9K is a little more than I want to pay for him, but it's a five-game slate, man. There's a few options. I don't mind getting to him right here. Like I said, in this pace-up matchup against the Spurs. 
Coming in at my small four, I want to look at Josh Hart. 6,600. Just scrambling for plays, man, especially at the small four position, man. I, I, I don't really like the pricing on anybody over here at small four on DK. But I think we can take advantage of Josh Hart right here. He's a slightly overpriced, but I don't mind paying for him. Like I said, it's a five game. You don't have very many options going against these Suns. Um, you know the rebound upside is there. Ingram coming back going to hurt his shot volume, but he still should be a solid double-double threat at this 6600 price tag and a perceived tough matchup against the Suns. Coming in at power four, I think we can look at Jalen Smith, man. Uh, 5,500, I have no problem going back to him in this matchup against the New Orleans Pelicans. We have really yet to see his ceiling, in my opinion, because we haven't seen him get 30 minutes yet. He's gave us two solid performances, and he hasn't seen 30 minutes yet. It's been two blowouts. He's played 27 and, like, 25 minutes, respectively. Um... It's a, it's a potential of a blowout here against these Pelicans as well. But uh, I like Jalen Smith, man. He contributes across multiple categories. He, he seems to be a nice double-double threat. You know I like them at this 5,500. And if this game is close, they're going to need his size and against Jonas Valanciunas. So I like getting Jalen Smith at 5,500. Still a lot of uh, fantasy goodness to be had over there. And then coming in at my center, man, I want to look at Damian Jones. If he's in line to start again, I expect him to see close to 30 minutes again. I'm going to like him, especially in this matchup against the Lakers at 4K. Plenty of value left over there. He probably is going to be kind of chalky, but I, I think it's good chalk in this spot. I don't mind getting to him right here at 4K. So there you have it, my starting five on DraftKings right now. De'Aaron Fox, Fred Van Vliet, Josh Hart, Jalen Smith, and Damian Jones. Let's go take a look at FanDuel and see what we like over there. Hey, if you're still watching, man, and haven't hit the like button, man, what are you waiting on, man? I know I'm blazing y'all with this content. <laughs> nah, but get your boy a like button, man. Let's do that. All right, at the top, man, point guard. Staying with De'Aaron Fox, man, I think right now, as the slate sits, he's my favorite player across both sides. I just think De'Aaron Fox is at a discount. He, you talking about a guy who, who, who's been a, a mid 8k player in the past not not so much this season but that's just because i think of halliburton asserting itself more uh especially as far as assist wise but i still like getting the fox man he's one of the primary scores for this king's team and i like him in this matchup against the lakers coming in at my shooting goal i think we can go back to Dwayne washington man if all those guys are out for the pacers we got away on the injury news but they should be no Levert, those, are, those guys in the health and safety protocols. I know they can come out faster now, but I don't think they're going to be that fast. So Dwayne Washington, as long as he's starting, those guys are out. I think he's in play at 4K. I like him. He's not afraid to shoot the ball. He, he, he He's looking to be a scorer when he's out there. So if his shot is falling, man, you should have a potential for a big game from him right here. And you don't need much of this 4K right here. So I like getting, going back to Dwayne Washington. Coming in at small four, I want to look at OG Ananobi, man. 6,400. I think I think I, I think this is a nice discount over here on FanDuel. He could could be one of the better price plays on the FanDuel side of it. You, we know what type of player he is. We know what he's capable of. The problem with Toronto is it is so many miles over there to feed. It can be anybody on a given night. It could be Van Vliet. It could be Trent Jr. It could be uh Scotty Barnes. It could be Siakam. It's so many miles to feed. So it's always risky playing Toronto, guys, because you never know who's going to do it. But I don't mind taking a chance on OG Ananobi right here at 6,400. Man, he a guy who fills up the stat sheet, steals, blocks, assists. He does it all. If he brings his offensive game, then you can get a monster performance out of him. So I don't mind rolling the dice on him in a pace-up matchup right here against the Spurs. Coming in at power forward, staying with Jalen Smith, man, 5,800. Like I said, we just haven't seen a ceiling performance from him yet. He has yet to crack 30 minutes, but he he hasn't need to. He hasn't he hasn't needed to, so we don't know if it's a minutes cap or whatever. I doubt it is. I just think it's a result of the blowout. So in this spot, right, like I said, against the Pelicans, they're going to need his size against Valanciunas. I expect him to see 30 minutes right here, barring a blowout. So. And then coming in at my center, you saw him already. I, Jonas Valanciunas, man. If he's back in the lineup, if he's going to see 30 minutes at 7,500, he can absolutely destroy this price tag. I don't mind playing two bigs against each other, man. That just means I should get majority of the rebounds in this game right here. If both teams is having an off-shoot night, I should be eating up on the glass right here. I, I never have a problem playing two centers 
uh, two opposing centers against each other, like I said, unless one of them is foul prone. But Jonas Valanciunas, 7,500, if he's going to see 30-plus minutes, you know he's a big double-double threat. He can smash this price tag. I definitely want to take a chance on him right here against the Suns because if the, if the Pelicans are in this game, I think it definitely stems from either him having a big game or Brandon Ingram having a big game. So the game is going to be close. I think it's one of those two. So I'm going to go with Jonas Valanciunas for the discount over here on FanDuel at 7500 All right? There you have it, man. My starting five on FanDuel. De'Aaron Fox, Dwayne Washington, OG Ananobi, Jalen Smith, and Jonas Valanciunas. Man, get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pools. You know I'm going to have them in mind. Make sure you're following on Twitter at DFS Goose so you can get the updated starting five about 30 minutes before lock. All right? Listen, man, that's going to do it for us here today. Y'all know the motto. Chances make champions, man. Y'all green up. I'll see y'all tomorrow, all right? Let's go.